Hello again everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how well another set of PC games will run on the replay. Usually, I would recommend checking for a driver update. However, Morelli has mentioned that the newer driver updates cause issues with the Dreamcast emulator ReDream. It also seems to make MAME's HSLS and GLSL settings act up. Thus, if you're not having any issues with anything, it might be worth holding off on updating. I am not sure if or when Intel will release new drivers that may fix these issues. If you don't use the aforementioned programs, or you want to see what the issues with the drivers look like, the most recent ones as of this video are February 24th. First up is And Yet It Moves, a puzzle platforming game released in 2009 by Broken Rolls. The game is set in a world of ripped up paper, while the player navigates a pencil line drawn character. This help gives it a neat and unique art style. While getting to rotate the world around now is more common in games of this genre, back then they were closer to being few and far in between. Before being released, it won the Student Showcase category of the 2007 Independent Games Festival. As shown here, the game does support using a controller, but things need to be mapped manually. The interesting art style, the ease of control when using a controller, and designer Christoph Bender's use of beatboxing to develop background music as well as the sound effects make this a fun game to come back to, whether it is sitting down for a bit of a game session or picking it up to play a level as a break from something else. Next up is the 2018 2D shooter from Didymore Studio Games, Armored Animals H1N1Z. In this cartoon style pew pew bang bang, the player gets to pick from a set of animals that include a cat, goat, pig, or dog to be dropped into and clean up infected animal warfare. A virus created by wild boars have turned packs of birds into zombies. The game features controller support and uses sort of an FPS style control layout. With it being third person, instead of just looking, you use the other control stick to move the aim cursor. This seems to take a little bit of getting used to, since it feels like the cursor needs to be on top or very near of the enemy you want to shoot, and not in their direction. Thus, if you have the cursor in their pathway, but not on them, bullets do not always seem to hit, at least not in what I have noticed. A glance at the Steam Store reviews also has another player mention this. Even so, the game is still fun to pick up and play to kill some time. It offers a few different weapons to pick up as you go along, and barrels to take shots at that will explode. The current price is 99 cents on Steam, and that seems to be the everyday price, so it's definitely worth checking out. The game seems to hover around 50 FPS for the most part and should play just fine. Third in today's list, is a platformer released in September of 2017 from Just1337 by the name of Cybercube. While this is a fun game, some might consider it unplayable due to the frame rate issues. When I went to launch the game, I made sure that all the settings were set to low. When getting into the menu, for some reason it runs rather slow at around 10 frames per second. I went to the game options and double checked to make sure everything was set to low, which it was. After getting through the menu and starting a game, frames go up to around 25 to 30 or so. The game can be playable, but I had to time my jumps to account for the lower frames. After getting used to it, everything was not too bad. It seemed to be easier to time things with a keyboard, but the game does support using a controller. It still took me a few tries to finish each level to get the timing down. You're able to change what the inside of your cube looks like under the Extras menu. More centers become available as you progress through the game and beat more levels. The game is pretty fun overall. It is backed up by a good and dancey type, for lack of a better term, soundtrack. While the soundtrack is unfortunately not for sale on Steam, the artist list is in the credits as shown here. The soundtrack is split up between two artists whose names I'm probably going to butcher. The first is Ehumitsu, and the second is Elixiv. Ehumitsu is on Bandcamp, a great site to find new music to listen to, and some artists allow you to pay what you think their music is worth to download it. Alexiv 
has a YouTube channel, but it seems that he has not been active in a few years. As a small thank you for sticking around, I happen to have a single extra Steam code for Cybercube. I'm hoping to rely on the honor system here. If you like the game, don't mind the lower frame rate on the replay, and would like to play it, you're more than welcome to grab the code. However, if this is not your type of game, or the frame rate makes it unplayable for you, please leave it for someone else. For anyone running Linux on their replay, the game does have a native Linux port. I tested it on a different machine, an Acer Revo RL80 with a 1.9 GHz i3, and it ran well. However, I have not tested it under Linux on the replay. Fourth in today's lineup is the 2013 2D fighting game from Lab Zero Games titled Skull Girls, which is set in a dark deco world. It features a single as well as a tag battle system. When I first ran the game, I noticed that like Cybercube, the menus run at a lower frame rate than the actual game. This time, the menus come in at around 20 while I was tinkering with different options. However, the actual game plays between 35 and 40 frames. When I first started the game, I could have sworn that there was a graphical settings menu before launch. Now, it does not seem to come up again. I went into the menu and looked at the graphical settings. However, all I could find was a resolution. While tinkering around with it, I made a bit of a whoopsie. When changing to different resolutions while running it on the replay, I caused the audio to stop working. I tried rebooting the game, I tried reinstalling the game, and I tried changing resolutions around again. I finally got it fixed by setting it to full screen at 1920 by 1080 and windowed to 1280 by 720. Then I set it to run as a borderless window. I also left backgrounds as 2D to get the most frames I could. I'm not well versed in fighting games, but a few rounds made it seem like most others to me. Not in a bad way though, plus the artwork and setting is pretty neat. Like Cybercube. I also happen to have a single key for this one as well. If you're into fighting games and you would like to give this one a go, you're more than welcome to it. If you take this or the other key, please mention so in the comments so others know. Last up for today's video is a free to play 2D MOBA called Awesome Knots, released in August 2012 by Ronimo Games. The game has two teams of three. Battle it out to see who can destroy the enemy's turrets and get to their opposing team's base first. It features a Saturday morning cartoon style set in the year 3587, where conflict spans across the stars as huge robot armies are locked in an enduring stalemate. The game features a big cast of characters to choose from, as well as tons of customizable options, including abilities, upgrades, skins, and character themes. The game has a map editor, Steam Workshop support, controller support, and is playable for the most part. It tends to hover around 25 to 30 FPS depending on what is going on at the moment. Hopefully, this round of game testing has given a user or two a new game to try, and whoever happened to grab the keys enjoys their new games. As always, thanks for hanging in there with me. I know things aren't on a regular basis as much as I'd like them to be, but your continued support just by watching and the hope that I might help a gamer find a new game they might enjoy keeps me going. Until next time, happy gaming.